2016 McLaren 675LT. Okay, you can go. Nail it. This isn't regular! The seat punishes your lower spine. The narrow footwell squishes your thighs together. The 3.8 liter twin turbo is an EDM noise track. The spring rates are enchanted war hammers, which make your vision shake. Rear visibility, don't worry about it. Front visibility, strange. I don't know what coating or material the front windshield is made of, but it messed with the GoPro's exposure. Look how the side windows are exposed correctly. You can see out of them. But the windshield is all blown out. It's overexposed. The whole car is a carbon fiber monocell with aluminum subframes. So it wouldn't surprise me if the 675's transparent bits are equally exotic. You're not supposed to open the engine cover. But we found this carbon fiber stick in the weeds. And it worked. So here's the engine. Still can't see much. You're not even supposed to change your own oil on a McLaren. But... Tavares proved them wrong, and then some. Okay, the top speed is 205 miles an hour, which is about 310 kilometers an hour. You will not be able to achieve this on the open road because the 675's computers will stop you. This is me trying to go full throttle up the driveway, and the accelerometers and traction monitors and onboard neuromancers said nope. This is the max power you're allowed based on the traction we sensed. But when the conditions are correct, this happens. All right, so we've got this little bit of hill here. So six, five, I got a lot of revs, don't I? Yes. Twenty sixteen McLaren six seventy five LT. Oh look, a track focus supercar. You're not actually allowed to track at non McLaren events without voiding your warranty. The McLaren six seventy five draws attention like a sad girl's smile, with its twenty thousand dollar volcano red option added by the previous owner and ground clearance lower than the chances of Saab coming back. This is self esteem ground clearance. And when you can't get in or out without a struggle, you know the performance is going to be lit. It's like Ace Ventura getting out of the mechanical rhino. You just sort of ooze out of it. And people just watch it happen. Because the insularity of exotic car ownership melts away under the wide-eyed wonder of a dude seeing his first up-close McLaren. It's like a teenager seeing his first boob. This car just radiates thirst trap energy. Catching your man looking! While we were filming this, a man and his son emerged from the farm field <laughs> and just and just sort of walked close. Like that that never happened before. I've seen other people come up when we film when we film car stuff, but this guy came from acres away. He saw this thing. Anyway, the engine's so small, I keep thinking it's a V6. And I apologize if I subconsciously say V6, but it's not. The M838TL under the hood is a 3.8 liter 8-cylinder twin-turbo V8, making a Satan-pleasing triple six horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. It's matched to a 7-speed dual-clutch seamless shift gearbox and features a proactive chassis control system. On the way to its top speed of 205 miles an hour, it goes 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. This was promoted by McLaren as the lightest, most driver-focused, most exclusive series production McLaren supercar ever built. The 675 refers to the 675 PS power output, while the LT refers to the long tail, the 1997 McLaren F1 that inspired it. It feels very much designed for the Nürburgring state of mind with its tactile interior that encourages hard gripping and silent gawking. It looks like a VFW hall for Starship Troopers. A McLaren 675LT is designed to do one thing, take a corner at 120 miles an hour. It's not designed to be comfortable or 
pleasing to drive. This is very hard. It punishes you. The seat, I, I need like a lumbar pillow in this thing. The seat is hard. The engine is loud. Everything vibrates. It's not meant for Pennsylvania roads at all. The experience of driving a McLaren when you're not used to driving supercars is a bit like drawing your own dick from memory. You know where everything is supposed to go and how, but you realize just how little you were paying attention to the details before. But when you launch this thing, really launch it. It's like staring into the void, letting it stare back at you and coming out the other side with wet jeans. I'm Jeff Bezos. A 675 LT is alien, yet familiar as the pop and hiss of a needle pressed to wax and filtered through a high-end stereo system. It's the raw sound of music whose goodness is perceptible, but not truly understood. It's getting together with three other friends to listen to that Flaming Lips album you needed four different CD players to listen to. Whether you sync up the records correctly or not, it's still music and perceptible as such. But are you really getting everything you could out of it? Am I really getting everything I can out of a 675 LT on these roads? No, and I don't see how I could. But does getting the most out of something guarantee its goodness? Because you can't meet every piece of media on its own battleground. I can't go to a McLaren event. No one's going to let RCR in. You can't listen to every album or drive every car in the exact conditions the creator intended. But artists still try, because they want to make something that will outlive them, something whose quality will be a, a, appreciated forever, a masterpiece of one specific moment. I'm aware people are looking at me in this thing. And it's, and it's a terrible car for carring. It has this tiny little frunk and like a shelf behind the rear seats, a tiny shelf. It'll hold like a Beats by Dre headphone case. I want to take another poop so I can reimagine my dreams. I asked Ben to come along with his C7 as a counterpoint to a 675 LT. Ben treats his C7 as a normal car, drives it to work. A C7 has a true trunk and comfortable seats and a flattering rumble. A 675 is a smaller displacement V8 with two slap chops, making the exhaust note into a circular 16-tooth PCD flooring blade. Tuscany Dick Cheese. Here I come. I'm so much better than all of you. What's up, Mr. Domino? You taught computers and baseball. You said I was fit to dig ditches because I didn't know how to use formulas in Excel. Look at me now. I'm in a McLaren. Suck my chode hole. What's up, Kenny? You managed me at the food court downstairs in the dining hall. You said I needed to check my attitude and stop touching my balls while I'm at the register. Well, what's up now? I'm in a McLaren. Enjoy your apron. I'm fully aware of how much of a dick I look in this thing. Because there's no point to be driving a McLaren on roads like this. Driving a 675 LT on a Pennsylvania state road is like Robert or Blast. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, a uh, strong man showing up at Planet Fitness. You don't belong here. There's nothing for you here. Driving a McLaren 675 LT in mid-state Pennsylvania is like Francis Ngannou taking a Taibo class. This isn't for you and you're well beyond this. Car makers live through the prism of expectation with the hopes that the repetitive nature of superiority means they'll eventually get it right, and that everything that worked before will work again. There really isn't anything that compels McLaren to be good other than reputation, which they wouldn't lose anyway, because even if the new models suck, it'd take years for the bad publicity to catch up to them and affect how the name McLaren is perceived. Intellectually, people know this is terrible for average road driving. It's more uh, about the peaks and valleys of enthusiasm, like when you ask the car to perform. No, no way can it. I'm doing it. Here I go. People believe in the goodness of the unattainable, and because they believe it, it is so. A McLaren can be good without serving any other purpose. It can be great just sitting here. Or a McLaren can be lousy and overrated without the reality of it ever affecting the larger fabric of modern car culture 
vis-a-vis that weird fox body thing they dip their finger into. Not all good is instructive and not all bad is destructive. McLarens exist and whatever you see in the ink blot test is what you put there. Hey, it's not a honey bee, it's a Roman bee. If you want to be track focused, it's time and you better not lack focus. It's kind of a struggle, it's a juggle of a mess you can overcome. In Spanish, super out means overcome. It's the word you want for the fools in front. Case and me think about a super out, you put your super out in the supercar. You'll be feeling like a super fly in a super ride, getting high off a new supply, feeling new inside. So many looks they'll be linking when you park like the new divide. You don't have to gaslight me, fight me, or write me. Maybe we could talk politely. It's likely the reason that I'm wound so tightly, concisely. These feelings will endure despite me. It might be McLaren's on the road to light me, nightly, slightly, precisely. Roman on the beat.